Manu, the gig last night was beautiful in a church, which seemed to just suit what you were you were doing. It was almost kind of spiritual and tantric. Um, it was a gorgeous show. How did you enjoy it? Uh, yeah, it was great. I really enjoyed it. I, I went to the church the day before to see the space, and it felt like a really nice bubble or oasis in this whole festival where people actually can sit down and listen to music and enjoy it. So I was very pleased with the space and also the audience was amazing. So it was a great experience. Good. And it's so chaotic in the best possible way here that actually having that very um, gentle, quiet sanctuary was lovely and a, and a great location for you to do the show. Um, how have you been enjoying so, uh, South By so far? Yeah, it's a, a great experience. It's my first time and I've already heard a lot about it. So it's it's kind of what I expected. A lot of people, a lot of music and, and, and chaos. But um, yeah, it's, it's great to have that sort of place where it all comes together. And um, it's, yeah, it's nice to be part of this. Wicked. So I really want to ask you about your, um, your style. You have a very distinctive sound. You seem to take quite a melodic approach to percussion um, where does that come from where do you gather your instruments from as well because everything I'm looking at on stage is quite unusual not what you'd see uh, percussionists using every day yeah I guess um, I've different backgrounds so I, I did study classical percussion so I played like marimba and and timpani a little bit and then I also played a lot of drum kit I studied jazz drums in London and so I've got that background as well and then I'm really into electronic music so we use a lot of electronic instruments as well and I play the hang, um, which is, I guess, melodic and percussive as well. So I'm just trying to surprise audiences and I'm, uh, yeah, d trying to be different, I guess, yeah. For sure. And I, I wonder if you find genre categorization um, troubling because what you do is very much of its own style, your own style. And I guess it's kind of human nature for people to sometimes want to put things in a bit of a box. But with your music, like many artists, uh, it's, it's hard to do. Um, what's your relationship with genre categorization? Well, since I only do music, I, I, I need variety within music. I, I, I would get really bored if I did like one particular genre all the time or like the same kind of thing. So even within my band, I try to have as much variety as, as I enjoy. You know, I mean, I'm not as much variety as possible, but like just as much I can enjoy. And I'm basically trying to create a, a big span from very gentle and quiet to loud and dynamic. And um, yeah, I just enjoy that. What's the most unusual way that someone's tried to describe your music or the most um, surprising genre that someone's sort of said that your music reminds them of? So I imagine there's many ways that people yeah. have described your sound, yeah. especially with your, your toothbrush. I, what, the, yeah. the, tell us about the track with the toothbrush very quickly because it, it's, it's um, nothing like what I've seen before. Well, you know, I mean, I guess any kind of sound can be described as percussion in a way and Toothbrush is just something that we all use every day. And, and one day I, I was brushing my teeth and had the idea, OK, this is kind of a rhythm. So if I sort of develop that a bit and, and, and create cool rhythms and make it stereo, so for two toothbrushes, and, and then just I wrote a piece for it. And, and I need another percussionist to perform it because it's actually not so easy to play it. So um, Especially yeah. with the gargling side of things as well. Like you just need that one moment or that one reaction from the audience that might make you want to giggle, it, then it, which could, I don't know, throw you off a little bit. Because I can imagine when you're gargling and trying to hold a tune, it's actually quite tricky yeah. to do. Or is it just something you're completely used to? It's now? not so, yeah. Well, the, the breathing is the hardest when you're gargling. Yeah. So um, that's. That's something that wind players are more used to. As a, as a percussionist, they don't think about breathing so much. So that's that's tricky when you're brushing your teeth and gargling and sort of have to breathe at the same time. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, so what is the weirdest or you know the most interesting, kookiest way that someone's described your music? I'm curious. Uh, I don't know really. I mean, I hear I hear so many different things. Uh, some people put it into the world music thing. Others into the electronica. Others uh, think it's sort of. I mean, I have contemporary classical elements. There are pop elements as well, so I don't know. I I often describe it by like just my my sideman project. So I over the last five years I've mainly been touring with with Björk and with Cinematic Orchestra and with Anushka Shankar, and those act those artists are really different, but all distinct in their style. So 
But I think that sort of describes a little bit sort of what I do. So somewhere in between those those worlds, I would so say. Fans of those artists, if they don't know you already, should absolutely be checking out what you're doing. Um, tell me about what it's like with uh, where you where you connect the musical dots when songwriting with Bjork. What did you bond over? Where, where did you find that your influences cross paths? Um, well, it, it's. It's hard to say because I was so influenced by her as a, as a teenager, so I listened a lot to her music. And it was, for me, it was interesting to find out what she listens to. So, and I think that, that it was really interesting to see how extreme her taste is. So she, she listens to a big variety of music, but sort of often very extreme. So it can be very intense electronic music, or it can be very, very minimal classical music or choral music or some... Uh, world music from uh, or like a singer from Azerbaijan or something so she's got a very uh, interesting taste and I, I got inspired by that and I think it also opened up my own listening habits and um, yeah she was inspiring in many ways nice I hear that when she meets fans she finds it quite um, she gets a little bit shy she finds it difficult to interact with people who are very um, full of praise for her music. As someone who is a fan, but also a collaborator, like how was it first, you know, getting to know each other in that in that way, from turning into a fan into a working musician? Um, I think I'm. I could kind of hide my my fan sort of <laughs> thing a bit. So I mean, I didn't ask her for an autograph when I met her. Sure. So I. I mean, I, I you know I, I treat everyone as a. As a human being, no matter who they are, if they are, you know, famous or not famous, or so, I just try to approach her as any other person. But I mean, I have to admit, it was very sort of, yeah, it was a, a big impact on me to to meet her, and it was definitely um, a big moment for me. Yeah. Nice. So back to you. There's a lot of exciting activity happening. Uh, you're coming to the UK. Tell us about those dates. Tell us about where anyone outside of the UK can catch you next as well. Yeah, we, we are on a world tour at the moment. So we just came from Australia and now we're doing shows in New York and LA after South by. And then we got the UK tour, which starts in Brighton and goes to London, Cardiff, Bristol, Manchester, Glasgow. It's like eight shows in uh, Milton Keynes and Southampton, I think. That's between 29th of March and the 6th of April. And then we move on to Central Europe and uh, yeah, Czech Republic, Austria, Switzerland, Germany, and so Wicked. on. That's really cool. I mean, your show that I saw at South by was one of my highlights. I was oh, in such you. a wonderful trance watching you perform. It was a treat for the ears and the eyes. So I like wish you massive good luck for the rest of the tour. And thanks I'm going to try lot. and catch you again before it ends. So cool. Thanks, man. Thank you. Thank you.